these Baltimore Ravens, they always leave you with so much to talk about. And this offseason, it has been no different. And more recently, the talk of the town has been Lamar Jackson not being in town for OTAs. But that's not a big deal. And we could give you so many reasons why. But in this episode, I brought on a special guest, a very special guest to give you a few reasons why it's just not that serious. And we're going to also dive into whether or not the Ravens have done everything in their power up to this point to give Lamar Jackson reasons to stay and there's of course so many different things that we're also going to cover in this episode but without further ado you know what let's just get into it yeah this feels like a dream and you know just what i mean you see my boy he like gotta made it how to made it well he's a fan and he like the ravens like the ravens and you know just what i mean So team keep it clean very very special guest in the building today uh we got sarah um and you know what before we get into it introduce yourself to team keep, even though they already know who you are but you can introduce yourself to team keep it clean let them know what you do what you did where you from all that good stuff yeah so uh what i do is i'm mostly just on twitter now um i worked for the ravens for 13 years mm -hmm. Started there in 2005, and I ended there a couple months after Lamar was drafted. So, uh, you know, I watched him a little bit in OTAs in the beginning of the camp and training camp, and then I was I was gone from there. We moved to Ohio. So, but, you know, that purple runs in my veins. I know you're down in Florida. I'm in Ohio. <laughs> when it's in your veins, it's in your veins. You just can't let it go. Yeah, you ain't lying. And where can everybody find you at? The link is going to be in the description, but where can everybody find you at? Yeah, mostly on Twitter, like I said, at SG Ellison. And um, perhaps I will have an announcement to make later, maybe right before training camp. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> perhaps. I hope, I, hope, I hope it is what I think it is, but I, I'll be patient. Ooh, okay, cool. That's good. Good to know. So, um, you said that you you left when Lamar came in. Yeah. And, and right now, we at OTAs, and Lamar Jackson, he hasn't come in yet. Yeah. Um, how big or little of a deal do you think that is? Yeah, I think from a football perspective, in terms of the 2022 season, uh, I don't think it's that big of a deal, um, assuming that he's there at least by mandatory camp. Uh, sounds to me based off of his Twitter, based off of Marlon Humphrey's comments, based off of Mark Andrews comments, he could be in before then. So I don't think that the fate of the season will be decided in May. Um, <laughs> but you know, Lamar is a polarizing figure. He's always been that way. Ing, we know mm -hmm. that. Right. And so everything he does is, is scrutinized. Uh, mm -hmm. there's other players that are not there. Uh, nowhere near getting the coverage as Lamar. And of course he's the quarterback. I do think that I get the, the argument. I mean, look, he's got a new center in there. Mm. He's got some wide receivers that want to prove themselves. Uh, he's got some new tight ends, you know, all of that. So that, so I, I get that to a certain extent, but even still, I feel like from a football standpoint, it's an overreaction. The, I will say this, I will say this. Um, Lamar not being there is out of character for, I think, who he's been up through now. And what I mean by that is, and again, like I said, he could be there next week and this could, this will all be forgotten about right. in a couple yeah. weeks time if, yeah. if he is. Mm -hmm. So I, but, but Lamar, I remember, you remember these days, Ing. Remember people complaining about Joe Flacco, right? It was always like, yeah, why doesn't he have more passion? Why doesn't he oh, get yeah. his receivers together <laughs> in the offseason? And you just wanted to get this feeling that he was all in, right? Mm -hmm. And that was right. never Joe Flacco's way. It was never mm -hmm. his personality. But to some, you would read it as he's not all in. And mm -hmm. here comes Lamar. Lamar is like, he gets his receivers together. <laughs> 
you know, <laughs> and, and Lamar does, I, he even did it at the end of the last off season. Cause they had asked about what happened. Why couldn't the offense be consistent? And he was like, he's like, you know, I just want to bond this off season. And then he said, you know, I don't want to just be receivers that I get together. I want it to be offensive linemen and the whole unit. I want us to bond. And so I will say, you know, this is the time to do it. He did. He, 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 he got, uh, Bateman there. It looked like Poche was, was, was throwing mm -hmm. to him and who knows, maybe there was more that he didn't put on social media. I don't know. And so just knowing that about Lamar and my impression of him is it's always been that he takes advantage of every little opportunity, you know? And so for him not to totally take advantage to me is a little bit of a deviation from like what's, what's, what he's been about. It's like his DNA. Does that make me concerned? No, but at least I am going to note it. It like it's it's like oh, that's a little bit different for Lamar. And then I think for others who are concerned, everybody wants Lamar to be a Raven with the contract not being signed. I think that adds to it, and it starts to snowball with the questioning. So mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I hate to demonize anybody that is a little bit nervous about it, um, because I I get it. It's to me, it's a change from what Lamar has done. But let's let's see how it unfolds. And, you know, I don't think he's holding out. I don't think he's angry at the Ravens. I don't I don't think any of that. Um, but you wonder why he doesn't have to tell us. Let's put voluntary back in voluntary OTAs. Let's remember that and keep in perspective who Lamar is. OK. And with all that being said, do you think that the Ravens this offseason up to this point in Lamar Jackson's career right here right now, do you feel like the Ravens have done enough? Uh, on their end, as far as personnel and scheme and philosophy and just the team as a whole, do you feel like they've done enough uh, to make Lamar Jackson happy to where he would want to stay? Yeah, well, I don't think they're done yet. I mm -hmm. I, I do think Eric DaCosta is going to bring in a veteran wide receiver, and I do think he's going to bring in another outside linebacker. I think it's going to be Justin Houston. I don't even know what that tag is that, that they tagged yeah, yeah, him that, with. That, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So it's but uh, based Un unrestricted free agent tender. So if he doesn't sign a higher deal by, I think the first day of training camp or some other date, then yeah. he'll go to the Ravens. Is this? I, I that was my first time ever hearing about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the first time I heard about it. So before I even had heard about it, I thought that Houston might be the one, the guy to to come back. He just clicked so well. He loved the organization. Right. He took a he took a pay cut to to come here. Like he was like he kept coming to to EDC and EDC was like, I don't even want to insult you with an offer based off of your career. He's like, just make me an offer, you know? So yeah. Houston, Houston seems like, um, a, a logical fit. So anyway, so I don't think they're done. Um, mm -hmm. that being said, do I think they've done enough for Lamar to make him come back? If it's true that Lamar's request to the Ravens was an offensive line, because I've been on team build a wall around Lamar for sure. Um, I don't think uh, Eric could, Eric DeCosta could have done much more in terms of offensive line. Like there are so many different combinations of the way this could, could work out, sure. um, from, you know, Stanley to Juwan James to where is McCary who just got a new contract. I mean, he literally could be a starter. I, I wouldn't put him you now. He's not at center. Now he's not gonna be at right guard. He could be at right tackle. He could be at left guard. Um, I suppose if Stanley wasn't healthy, he could even do left tackle, maybe prove yeah. people wrong there. Anyway, so, I mean, from the draft, Falele, Linderbaum, bringing in Morgan Moses, Zeitler last year. Mm -hmm. um, they've got, you know, you got Cleveland coming back, Tyree Phillips. I mean, there's a lot of options there for, I think, the best offensive line since 2019 and that 2019 line was Ooh. the bomb, right? It was, okay. the, I'm sure we'll talk about that later. I know we're going to get into 2019, <laughs> um, but, but I think it's going to be a much improved offensive line from, uh, from last year, obviously. Um, so, ha so yes, I, I would hope, I would think if I'm Lamar, I'm not, if I were Lamar, I'd be pretty happy with Eric DaCosta, what Eric DaCosta did. Uh, tight ends. I see oh, Nick yeah. Boyle coming back. I still got my guy, Mark Andrews, who's basically wide receiver one <laughs> in a tight end's mm. body. Um, it, his production is his production, his production is, is, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the, the way people talk about wide receiver one, 
when, when they usually talk about it in terms of production and being a guy that could be there for the quarterback. That is, mm-hmm. that is Mark Andrews, obviously yeah. where, where he's at and routes and all that is very different. Um, but production mm-hmm. wise, he's, he's wide receiver one. Um, then we'll see what comes from those rookies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wide receiver, eek. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, hey. So, hey, hey, listen, you know, I, I do a lot of stuff with, with, with Kadri Ishmael. Mm-hmm. And maybe he's got me, you know, buying into this. And I think I am. It, it's, it's, um, it's hard to do this, but he just keeps high, like this for the passing game. Okay. You have to rethink this. You have to rethink it. It's tight end centric. Mm-hmm. It's tight end centric. I, when I was going back to look at the 2019 squad, because that's what everybody's talking about, right? Like what's what, right. what was 2019, right? But, mm-hmm. And it's just to put you in this framework. So in 2019, there were 3,300 receiving yards. 60% of those receiving yards came from tight ends and running backs. Okay. 40% were wide receivers. And that was in a historic offense. I don't, I, I'm not saying the Ravens are going to repeat that to have that, that history again, mm-hmm. but it, but I do think there is weight in recalibrating our minds a little bit and thinking this is a tight end centric offense in the passing game behind running game, which is number one. And so, and so it's hard, it's hard to do that. Cause all you want to think about are the big name wide receivers you see throughout all the NFL. And then it's nice if you have a good tight end on top of it and here like 60, 40 split, I, I need to do a study to see what other teams are like, but 60, a 40% of your receiving yards came from wide receivers. So I don't know. I don't know how, how Lamar feels about, having a loaded tight ends group and Rashad Bateman and maybe a couple other guys. Um, I'm sure he would love to have both loaded. Um, so, so I don't know. I can't speak for Lamar, but I, I do think he's got an offensive line. He does have a sweet tight ends group and he loves his tight ends also. Mm-hmm. And, and, and let's see what happens with Bateman. And I still think Derek DeCosta has got to sign somebody else. Right. Right. Now, when you talked about the offensive line, you talked about all the different possible options and combinations that they have that they could put together to make the offensive line. Patrick McCarry, yeah, left tackle, right tackle, right guard. He could be anywhere. Uh, Morgan Moses, Daniel Falele, Ronnie Stanley. Hopefully he comes back healthy. Um, but they have a lot of different options. And then uh, another plus is that some of the guys like a Tyree Phillips, um, some of the guys who may not be starters, and even Patrick McCarry, too, depending on how things work out. Some of the guys who may not be starters, they have starting experience. So that'll mm-hmm. help them, too. Um, but, but as far as options, uh, another thing, another scenario, another time frame when the Ravens have a lot of options was about a month and a half ago. Well, yeah, actually about a month ago. Uh, and that was during the draft. How did you feel about the Ravens draft? Because I never got to get a recap from you since this is the first time you've been on here in a little minute. How did you feel about that Ravens 2022 draft as a whole? Yeah, well, in terms of value, oh, I hope I have this right. It's been a minute since I looked at this stat. But I believe that they got, let's see. Okay, so it's Kyle Hamilton, Linderbaum, mm-hmm. Travis uh, Jones, Jones. Mm-hmm. and then it was Falele, right? They Ajabo definitely too. got. Oh, a Jabo. There we go. A Jabo. I'm. I. This is like a mental thing I do. I like to pretend that I got to wipe him out, and then if he happens to come back in, uh, you know, like October, yeah. then I'm gonna be like, okay, I didn't, I didn't expect that. Now I'm gonna love it, you know. Yeah. Uh, he so is a Jabo. Bonus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then from Travis Jones up to the first round picks, that's four players that were in like consensus. Um, I believe it was top 40, mm. top 40, four players that are rated in your top 40. That, that, had, that has some, that has some potential right there. Mm-hmm. And so I, I do like the Ravens philosophy of trading for value or drafting for value rather than position. 
Nobody looks back in. If we were to go back and look at the Ravens' last five draft picks, we wouldn't we wouldn't look at say 2017 and say, oh, but this was a need at this t- at that time. And so we're going to evaluate this draft five years ago based off of those needs. No, none of us do that. We go back and say, who became a pro bowler? Who became a starter? Who became a a contributor? contributor? Who was a bust? That's all we do. We don't evaluate it with need in mind. And so, but, but we do it totally in the moment, which, which is backwards. And I think the Ravens have it right. So, so I think, Seeing Hamilton fall to 14, uh-huh. Ojabo fall to, you know, the second round there. I'm trying to remember exactly what number it was, you know, to get, to get a first round pick out of Hollywood Brown. I think Arizona overpaid. Um, so, you know, he didn't get a wide receiver. He didn't hit some of those needs, but it, but and when we look back in three years, I don't think we'll care. I think it'll be like, wow, look at the, let's see what these top four guys are doing. And if mm-hmm. they're t- starters, which all of them, I mean, would you, I mean, I'd be, have a hard time saying none of them will be starters within the, you know, three years. Oh, okay. And yeah. two of them, two of them already going to be starters this year, for sure. The top two, let's see right. what Ojabo does and Travis Jones in the next two or three years. Why couldn't he be a signature piece? Yeah, yeah, that's true, especially with Calais Campbell up there. And uh we'll see how Michael Pierce does. Um Wait, now, how did you how did you rate it? I thought they got I, I feel like it was a really good draft. <laughs> oh <my> I, gosh. <laughs> I feel like it was a really good draft. You're they, not uh, saying that with a straight <laughs> face at all. It could. <laughs> You you already brought it up, but I feel like it was a really really good draft. Um, they got the center, they got safety, the future center, the future. I mean, safety and, and center of not even the future, but now. Now. Um, they got depth at running back, depth at on the offensive line. Uh, Jabo, he'll be a nice bonus when he gets healthy. And just thinking about uh, Dafi away and, and David Ajabo. Uh, and still with Tyus Bowser too. Um, so they they got a, a lot of nice pieces. They just, of course they got the two corners, so that's nice depth as well. And then they went crazy with the tight ends too. And I saw that with the with those tight ends going into the 2021 season, uh, the college football season, those were the number one and two ranked tight ends. Um, so for them to get those two, it it ended up working out. And, and this is a like you said, a tight end centric offense. So they they'll, they'll be just fine. Um, and especially likely, likely he'll move around a lot too. Ain't gonna do no corny, cheesy dad jokes about likely's name right now. Um, but anyway, uh, so I felt like the the draft was was great, but my only gripe that I had with it was in the first round when when they tra- because me, I mean, you know me, you know I, I talk about wide receivers all day, every day. Um, but I felt like they needed a significant wide receiver even before Hollywood got traded. So then when they traded yeah. Hollywood, I was like, okay, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, they're getting a wide receiver. Oh, it's coming. It's happening in the first round. And I actually thought before the draft, so obviously before the Hollywood trade, I was for sure that it, within the first three rounds that they were going to draft a wide receiver before Hollywood even got traded. So then when he got traded, I was like, oh, yeah, for sure. It's going down. It's happening. They just got yeah. rid of Hollywood. Oh, yeah, they, they first three rounds for sure. And yeah. it didn't happen. I was like, oh, oh, okay, okay, all right. Um, and then I just wondered, like, hmm, with these Ravens, how, because Hollywood said he, he had been wanting to get traded for the past couple of years, talking to Eric DeCosta about it and whatnot. Um, but I wondered, like, it, it made me question, like, huh, if they knew Hollywood wanted to be traded. They knew they were going to trade him and whatnot. Um, why didn't they act sooner as far as replacing him? Uh, but because right now it's just yeah, Bateman, Duvernay, Prochet, Wallace, and b- they had some guys from last like year, like Benjamin. Five hundred undrafted rookies, and <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. And then, and I'm I'm thinking about this even even before they before the undrafted rookie class. So I'm like, why why weren't they why weren't they proactive with that? Um, so we'll see what they do. But um, as far as uh, yeah, so I feel like they they nailed everything except wide receiver. And as far as this roster as a whole, I feel the same way about the roster as a whole because 
they have like they got quality depth in a lot of spots, man. It's like mm. from from really top to bottom. Like you you got like 20 tight ends right now. Uh you got like about 17 running backs. Uh, yeah. Obviously, your quarterback situation is taken care of. You have two fullbacks because you got Pat Ricard and they got Ben Mason too. Yeah. So they got they even got depth at fullback. Offensive line, we just talked about that. Um, defensive line, defensive you got line, it. Yeah, linebacker is uh, it's a little thin, yeah. but it might be because of the safeties and how who knows how much That's they'll true. be in Depending like dime packages. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Safeties, they they already had a million safeties, and then they added another one. Oh, add another two, Marcus Williams and Kyle Hamilton. With Boom. corners, uh, I, I I really, really like that Kyle Fuller signing uh, from yesterday. Or well, by the time mm-hmm. you all see this video, maybe two days ago. But I really like the Kyle Fuller signing because we know – and it was nice. I, I didn't even realize. Like, I've been thinking this whole time, yeah, Marcus Peters coming back from season-ending injury, Marlon Humphrey coming back from season-ending injury. But it never quite clicked to me until uh, yesterday. I'm like, hold up. Marlon Humphrey, he's back out there. Yeah, and, I know, right? he's, he's been going. So like, Everybody's right. talking about Lamar. It's like Marlon Humphrey and Odafe Owe, who are massive pieces in this defense, mm-hmm. didn't even have to wait after surgery, didn't have to wait till training camp. They were day one in OTAs. That it was excellent news. Yeah, and I, yeah. I hadn't even realized that. So they um they have so much depth at most spots, but just the wide receiver. That's the the spot that I, I, I question. The, well, there's not depth. There's not much depth there. They do have, like you mentioned, a lot of undrafted free agents. Uh, a lot of undrafted rookie free agents, and some of them look nice. Some of them look mm-hmm. nice. When I when I watch the film on them, I'm like okay, let's go. Like Makai Polk, that's one that stood out. Uh, okay. It was Amike Amezi, but I don't know what happened with the deal there. He ended up going to the Panthers. Um, but then um, Devin, oh, his last name is slipping my mind right now. He's from Oregon, a wide receiver. Uh, I want to say Devin Williams, but I think I might have his last name wrong. But either way, um, so they got some guys that got the potential to make the roster. Um, but still, uh, that's my biggest area of concern right now. Now, when it comes to wide receiver, do that's you- That's just facts. That's not even like, that's just facts. Like, mm. that's not even like being like emotional or nervous about it. Like, wide receiver is by far the thinnest. I mean, mm-hmm. it just is. So, um, and so your question of like, would Lamar be happy with that? I mean, it's usually a a, a quarterback wide receiver kind of a thing, you know, in this league. So, so, um, that's why, I mean, I, I, I would be surprised if Eric DeCosta didn't add another wide receiver. I would be surprised, but sorry to interrupt you. I just, I just wanted to support what you were saying and that it was facts for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Interrupt the way. I don't mind. Um, so, and with wide receivers, um, it's funny because, and not even just with wide receivers, um, but with wide receivers, they apparently have been trying. There have been all these reports and whatnot about the Ravens apparently trying to get different wide receivers. There was a report about Jalen Rager from the Eagles, even though and I was like, I don't know about that one. But they they, they, they were apparently interested in him. Um, the report came out that they were interested uh, in Jarvis Landry, but that was one that I wouldn't have minded, um, but I never thought it was going to happen. Um, yeah, that one I I got a feeling of an agent trying to gin up, <laughs> right? Where it's like, yeah, Eric DeCosta made a phone call because duh, they need a wide receiver. But like, I I kind of those reports somewhat bother me because I do think I mean whatever, give us all the reports, whatever. But we do know that a lot of these reports are agent driven, mm-hmm. and sometimes I just think it makes look makes it look like Eric DeCosta can't put together a deal when it's like. He makes a million phone calls a day. And obviously, so an agent saying wide rec- like Ravens with the wide receiver, they're an easy one for an agent to say because maybe there was a phone call. How yeah. deep the interest, I don't know. But everybody will like eat that up because obviously the Ravens <laughs> don't have a deep wide receiver core. So right. it's like, I, I would just say pump your brakes on like whether or not Eric DaCosta can like pull off these deals or how much he was really trying on, on at least Landry. Uh, maybe the trade, maybe that's, that has more substance because it sounded like there was like an offer for, what was it? Was it, was it Chuck? Yeah. Chuck Clark and yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, with the Eagles and Jalen Riga. Yeah. Yeah. And with the, um, with a lot of the interest from the Ravens that gets reported on, um, 
uh, especially especially this off season. This off season has been whoo. It's been a crazy one as far as interest from the Ravens because whenever the Ravens there's reported interest with them in a player, it doesn't end up happening. Uh, with Raven, with every single Ravens free agent signing this off season, there hasn't been any talk about it. There haven't been any reported. Oh, Ravens are interested in this player. All of it has been the first time you hear about it. Ravens signed this Boom. player. Yep. Because before the free agency started, oh, Ravens are interested in Tyron Matthew. I was like, oh, okay, I ain't mad at that one because I didn't think they were going to sign Deshaun Elliott back. Um, and if they did, I thought maybe they may sign him to a one-year prove-it deal. Uh, but they didn't re-sign him back, and they went and got Marcus Williams. And it's like, even though there were some people that said Marcus Williams made sense, there was no official, like, all right, Ravens are interested in Marcus Williams. Mar it just ended up happening. Then I remember um, the next signing after that, me and my wife, we were watching a movie. Um, man, I forgot what the movie was called. It was a really good movie on Netflix. We were watching a movie, <laughs> and I turned my notifications off on my phone because I wanted to watch the movie. The movie was so good. It was about, like, this healthcare lady that was taking advantage of these older people in, in these healthcare homes. But anyway, um, so we were watching it. I'm all into the movie. Then all of a sudden, and this is, like, at 11 o'clock at night, I just checked my phone. Maybe I went to go to use the bathroom or something real quick, so I checked my phone. I got all these messages. I'm like, oh, Raven signed Morgan Moses? I'm like, what? Where did that come yeah, from? Yeah. So that, that came out of nowhere. Patrick Ricard, I mean, I, I think most people figured Patrick Ricard would be back, so I don't think that one was a surprise, anything like that. That's different um, when it's a returning player. Yeah. Right, right, right. But even Kyle Fuller the other day. Like, yeah, that was out of nowhere. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. uh, But when this interest, like the interest in a Bobby Wagner, uh, Zadarius yeah. Smith, that, that, that's a whole nother story right there. But the interest in the Bobby Wagner, the interest in Jarvis Landry, um, the interest in uh, Emmanuel Ogba, that was early, early on. Uh, but when there's the, the the reported interest, it just it doesn't end up coming to fruition. So if I hear yeah. about the Ravens being interested in somebody soon, we'll talk about it. But I ain't going to get too hyped about it because I don't really right. think it's going to go down like that. Right. Because that's definitely agent driven. Mm -hmm. Ravens aren't Ravens aren't calling up you know, Ian Rappaport mm -hmm. and being like, hey, <laughs> hey, we called over to see if Wagner's, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not coming from the Ravens. Mm -hmm. If it, Yeah, it's not happening there. And so. Mike Davis too. That was another one. That wasn't out of nowhere. nowhere. Yeah. So, and, and then, but yeah, yeah, agent driven. One, one thing that I think most Ravens fans, I, I think they were all like, they all felt it. Uh, that it was agent driven was the Melvin Gordon because when reports came out that the Ravens were interested in Melvin Gordon, I remember yeah. the people being like, "What <laughs> Melvin Gordon? Like, why would we add another running back?" But then, like a month later, they signed Mike Davis, so there you go. Yeah. Um, so again, Ravens, uh, this off season, they've been staying ready, so they don't have to get ready.